that have transpired in the last few days is a dilemma I was um, talking to some radio stations um, in uh, Muchinga province but unfortunately some alleged patriotic front attackers did uh, disrupt some of uh, those interviews. So he is uh, basically here today to give us more information on what transpired and what he thinks should be done in regards to the violence as well as uh, attacks that uh, did uh, transfer, transpire in the last few days. So Mr. Jilema is already here and I will hand over the mic to him as he sits um, trying to observe uh, social distance. He decided that uh, he only sits when I have left uh, the high table. Yeah, fellow countrymen and women, I would like to bring the country, the people of Zambia, and I believe through the media, very important media, to the global community as to what is going on in Zambia. And this, what is going on, is not a coincidence is not accidental. It is a pattern. It is a scheme that the PF has engaged since they took office. Those who may not believe that this is a scheme, this is a plan, this is a program, you just need to reflect on what has been going on in our country since PF took public office by whatever means. That's a discussion for another day. What is happening to the media, media institutions, media houses, journalists, and in the process, innocent citizens that are being brutalized, that are being attacked by PF, is unacceptable in a country we call a democracy, in a country we call a constitutional democracy. Yesterday, at the Soka radio station, I was appearing on that program, and the PF thugs waging weapons. I understand, because I did hear gunshots myself, including guns, dangerous weapons. But they did not just carry guns, they actually brutally, viciously attacked the radio station and those who were inside the radio station with first some gas. They spewed some gas, gas in the station. Now, how do civilians if they are civilians, carry gases. What gases are those? What poisons are those? They gas the station and then attack the individuals who were inside. And their search was to eliminate a citizen called HH. Why? Why injure innocent journalists when we have the freedom of the media? We're supposed to have the freedom of the media. So, are they not the same people who were gassing citizens a few months ago? We can conclude they're the ones. And yet, the PF were looking for suspects when the suspects were themselves, were their members. This is what's going on in our country. They went ahead and injured innocent people. Knife injuries and the police had to battle. After some time, of course, to do Earlier in the week, or days,
They attacked again my radio program in Chinsari, Muchinga radio station. Viciously so, in a similar manner. Brutal individuals. Before I was to appear on Pika Radio, and a civil servant, one who gets paid salaries from you and I, a district commissioner called Moses Katere, instructed Mpika radio station not to cover my program. Where does he get the powers from? Which law is he using? None at all. Hooliganism. Terrorism. That's what it is. The provincial chairman for PA Muchinga province, a chap by the name of Simuelu, issued a, th a threatening statement that Muchinga was a no go area for me, for HH. Which law is, was he using? Which law was he using? None at all. The Bill of Rights in our constitution, which is the fundamental law, entitles every citizen to freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, and freedom of the media. But one Simuelu, who later I understand was supported by some character really called Sunday Chan. You know, some citizens, God denied them favor and just gave them such bad manners that one individual can consistently continue taking away the rights of citizens as though there's a different law that applies to them and that which applies to us. Very unfortunate. But this is not an accident. I insist, I want the Zambians to open their eyes that this is a pattern, this is a program. This is a state-sponsored terrorism by the PF. Let me rewind the clock a little bit. I'm sure Zambians have not forgotten how PF brutalized and killed in cold blood our member, a young member in Kaoma by the name of Lawrence Banner. And the one who killed Lawrence Banner is known, but he's walking a free man when a young life, a young father, a young husband, a young wife, his life was taken away. Military type execution, two or three bullets in his head, in the day, in the presence of Mumbi Piri, because she confessed so. No interview by the police given to Mumbi Piri. No arrests up to now. The question to Zambians, was Lawrence Banda an insect which needed to be killed at will? Was he not a citizen? Was he not a human being? He was. Should his life be taken like that? No. Do we know who took his life? Yes, we know. It is the PF and its thugs, its militias. Lawrence is blind. He's on the head, the heads of not just he who killed him, but on the heads of Mr. Lungu and all the PF senior members who are allowing this thuggery, this terrorism, Again, the citizens to continue unabated. Examples help to wrap the matter, to wrap the issue, to nip the bad in the bud, to nip the bud in the bud. But it doesn't happen with fear. Don't forget, citizens should not forget what PF did to some of us during the Sashaka by elections. They waged a terrorist, Mr. Kangombe Sini, the father to the current member of parliament, Romeo Kangombe, who died out of suffocation 
because of the gases that appeared discharged in the community. A non-violent community, a peaceful community of Mawondo, and later in town, Sesheke town. This was like a war zone. How can it be that a so-called government can wage war on harmless and harmless citizens? This is a question Zambians must ask. Do Zambians want a government like that to continue? Absolutely not. I can go on, citing another example. Let's remember what happened during the Rwanda by election in Rwanda, where an NDC member died out of brutal wounds that were inflicted on him by the same PF tax, non PF tax. Should his blood be lost like that? No. Because he's an NDC member? No. Because he's a Zambian, we are all his protectors. And we must make sure that the death of our citizen, our comrade, the NDC member, who died during the wrong by-election, is accounted for. And that time will come. No question about it. Umulandu Taubola. Umulandu Taubola. That's what we said. See what they did in Bahat by-election. I was pushed out of Bahati by-election, just like a thief. I was not even allowed to campaign. I was there for four days. I only campaigned for one day. Is this what you call a democracy? Absolutely not. Let's go to Chilubi Island. Look what they did to Chilubi in Chilubi during the by-election. First, President Kamwiri of NDC and myself brutally out of Chilubi. When Chilubi is so huge that we can campaign in different corners of the constituency at the same time. The PF used the argument that the area was too small for Mr. Lungu and some of us to be there. How callous can that be? Where does Mr. Lungu live? Where does Mr. Kamwiri live? Where does HH live? We all live in Lusaka. How come in Lusaka we are together? But in Chilubi, an area much bigger than Lusaka, we cannot be together. There's callousness. That is the way those are the ways of dictators, terrorists, masquerading as government officials. They are not. They have never been. I can go on with other examples. What have they done to the media? The PF closed the post newspapers. The post newspapers was in existence even under the one-party state. Even under that time, the one-party state president, Vashikuru Vasata, not Vashikuru Vasata, Vashikuru Vakaunda, respected law and order. He did not shut the post. Although it itched him, because it was critical of him, Vashikuru Vakaunda never went to the extent of closing the post down. Who closed the post down? The PF and Mr. Long. Was that by... No, it was a scheme to silence independent opinions. That's what Zambians need to know. They went ahead for some time, closed it a stage radio station here. Not a mistake, a plan, a scheme to silence all independent voices, alternative voices. That's what we're facing today. They went ahead and closed. For some time, common radio. They closed movie television for some time. And when they closed movie television, we spoke, we said, this is not a one-off. This is what PF is going to continue doing in order to silence democratic voices, alternative voices. Surprise, surprise. Zambians must say they were surprised. They shouldn't be surprised. Prime television gets closed. So the closure of prime television is part of this grandiose scheme of the PF to shut down the media. Only dictators do that. There is no government that can claim to be democratic and act in the manner PF has been acting. None at all. There is none at all. 
So this qualifies PF to be called a terrorist organization, a dictatorship. Didn't we talk about before? We talked about it. Don't pay attention. I got arrested around 2012, 2013 for saying that PF were training militias. Most of you may have forgotten. But please, institutional memory, national memory must be stored, must be kept alive in order for us to avoid making the same mistakes, giving public office to people that are terrorists at heart, that are brutal by nature, by orientation, by philosophical orientation. The PF is a terrorist organization. It's a brutal organization. It's an oppressive organization. The examples I've given are only a few. I could go on. Don't forget what PF did to me. At, when I was in Nola appearing at Sun FM, they wanted to kill me there. They wanted to kill us there. Many of us. We had to go through the roof. And I could have fallen off the roof and died instantly. Because that was the fourth floor where we went. Many Zambians looked at it as one-off. It wasn't a one-off. It was a scheme. This is what we're faced with. A government fails to deliver economically, socially, damages our economy from 7% growth in 2011 when BF took over to less than 2%. You don't need to be an economist to understand. You don't need to be a finance guy to understand that this is a government not worth to be called a government. This is a destroyer government. This is a destructive government. They found the kwacha trading at five kwacha to a dollar in 2011. Then today they want to argue with the people of Zambia that no, coronavirus. No, Mkwai. Tuakana. The dollar, sorry, the culture was not destroyed by the coronavirus. The culture was destroyed by the poor leadership or lack of leadership. Kubolochi Monwa is what is destroying the culture. Because by December 2019, the culture was trading from five culture in 2011 to 15 culture before the coronavirus set on us. So it is true that it is not the coronavirus that destroyed the culture. It is the poor leadership of the PM. It's the absence of vision. As I said, and that's what UPND wants to do to correct this country. To bring this country in line with what it should be. To restore the dignity of this country. PF cannot do it. Only UPND can do it. I ask the people of Zambia to reflect on these things we've talked about. I ask the people of Zambia. What else did PF do? If examples, more examples will help you. You can mention them, you know them as the Zambian community. How many times have the journalists been brutalized by PF? How many times? And the strange thing, the strange thing is that anything that is suspected of members of the opposition of having committed a crime, or insinuation of a crime, or anticipation of a crime, our members are arrested instantly. Our members are shot at and killed instantly. Even when they're exercising their democratic right. How can we forget Mapen Shibor? How can we forget a young lady brutally murdered in cold blood by the PF system? How can we forget Shimujira? How can we forget so many others that were brutalized <coughs> and killed under a PF program called GASI? I want Zambians not to forget that. How many people were killed? Those that were told by numbers, by the police, 40 plus, maybe 50. But those that were killed by the police were never disclosed. So this is a murderous government. I want citizens to reflect that before them sits a murderous government, 
a government that has failed to deliver economically, a government that has failed the students, a government that has failed marketeers, a government that has failed drivers, bus drivers, truck drivers, a government that has failed civil servants, a, a government that is failing councils, learning institutions, where salaries are not paid on time, where benefits, retrenchment or retirement benefits are not paid on time, but a small number of people are lavishing in luxury, buying brand new VXs, spending money lavishly in a corrupt manner on fire tenders. We lost $31 million on the 42 fire tenders to corruption. We lost so many millions on ambulances. We lose so many millions on the overpricing inflation, inflating of so many millions. Now, this year I'm told they've given contracts two years ahead of the season to their friends at a phenomenal price of 18,000 kwacha per metric ton of fertilizer. When that fertilizer should only cost around 8,000 kwacha per metric ton. Who is eating the 10,000 kwacha per metric ton? And you are talking about just one season, somewhere close to $300 million of money spent and wasted. And someone tells you, no, the government has no buy money to buy ventilators for the coronavirus patients. No, the government has no money to buy protective gear for the frontline soldiers who are fighting in this COVID-19 war. What's going on? Please come. Please come. What's going on? You have a government that has confirmed its failure. It's up to you, Zambians, to change it. 2021 is tomorrow. Be ready. Get your national registration cards. Get your voters' cards. That's your weapon in a democracy. Especially the youth. You have no chance at all for education under peer. You have no chance at all for employment after school. You have no chance at all for business opportunities under the peer leadership. There's only a future in the UPND. So let's galvanize around the UPND as we did as a nation before independence to deliver independence. Kunari de Vosankana, we worked together, unit of purpose. We delivered multi in 1991 using unit of purpose. I asked the youth of Zambia to rise and reclaim their freedoms and their democracy, to work together, to prepare for 2021, and not to be afraid of these brutal little terrorists. No government can overrun the people. None at all. No one. None at all. Examples are abound in the world. Even those who used to buy or keep golden pistols in their wrists or waists, when the people decided that enough was enough, those golden pistols couldn't work. How can a government spend so much money on cameras, cameras to spy on citizens when we have not enough testing equipment for the coronavirus? And therefore, we don't know the full extent and numbers of the coronavirus patients. Even when the numbers seemingly are going up, we don't know the full extent. Because the government's priorities are upside down. <clears throat> buying cameras to spy on citizens, instead of buying food, instead of buying medicines in hospitals, instead of creating youth funds, which the UPND will do. That's what difference will bring to the table. Policemen, please, do what you are trained to do. Act professionally. Protect citizens. And be As under our leadership, soon to come, the law will be blind to a political party, the law will be blind to ethnicity, the law will be blind to religion. We are all Christians, but you break the law, 
the law will take its course. And it will be done professionally. The police will act professionally. The criminal justice system will be basically restructured, reworked, so that citizens truly are deemed innocent until proven guilty. And that the criminal justice system will not keep people in jail who are innocent and leave the palpable people, like those who killed Lawrence Banda, in their homes, in their streets, in the streets. Those who killed many individuals in cold blood. Those are the ones the law under the UPND will follow, as President Mwanawasa showed us an example, a very good example. We miss him today. We miss him today because these things will not be happening. I want to assure Zambians, when UPND takes office, you will be protected in the street, in the market, on the taxi rank, everywhere you'll be protected by law. No one will disturb you because we'll bring law and order, because we will be in a position to take care of every citizen. That's the job of a decent government. Obviously, the UPND the decent government, not this PF terrorist government. Police act. We're expecting arrests in Chisoka. There are known people, arrests in Chinsali, and the arrests of Simuelu for threatening violence. Didn't he threaten a few days ago, and yesterday there was violence? Sunday Chanda was threatening violence. We expect arrests to be made of these criminals to prove if if Mr. Lungo and his government want to prove that they are a government of laws, let them effect these arrests and prosecutions must commence effectively. And also, we don't expect knowledge to be issued, abuse of knowledge. This is why I'm talking about a reform of the criminal justice system. Somebody is arrested for a crime, is taken to court, is given a knowledge. An innocent person is arrested, is not taken to court for years and when the matter is tried in court, no judgment is given over an innocent person. The PF criminals, a small number of them, are enjoying both no arrests when they should be arrested, are enjoying knowledge, no, there's blindness there will be blindness in the laws under UPND. I want to assure the people of Zambia, do not lose hope. Help is on the way. Bali's job is to take care of everybody, including many PF members who are just being blacklisted because of the misdeeds, misdemeanors, and criminality of a few members of PF who are eating, who are enjoying. When the majority members of PF, the true greens, those who fought with Mr. Sad when we were in opposition together are not enjoying. Who is enjoying? Those who were beating the PF members and us, like the Lusambos and many others. So I want the PF true Sata supporters to reflect. Is this what you fought for? I guess, I guess no. Is this what you expected? I guess no. Let us come together. Let us work together. Let us restore dignity in our country. And I want to say to our members, defend yourselves. That's a constitutional right. You can't be maiming people every day. Defend yourselves. Because that's what the constitution says. No one has a right to take away the life of another. No one has a right to maim others and get away with it. Defend yourselves. But to avoid that situation, the police must defend all citizens. Then we can avoid a chaotic situation like that. But I want to close by saying PF has planned this chaos from day one. But if, when we stand together as citizens, we will defeat this terrorist group called PF. We will overcome. We shall overcome. God will never give us a load that is too heavy for us to carry. God is teaching us Zambians that this group of thugs, 
this group of terrorists called PF must exit public office in 2021 to bring a decent leadership of the UPD. We can carry that lot into the election to get analysis, to vote big, to unite, to protect the vote at all costs until we are sworn in, and then to deliver the country is economic success through a visionary leadership of the UPD. Leadership a leadership that will run the country's resources in a prudent way. A leadership that will ensure equitable distribution of our resources. A leadership that will ensure social justice in our community, in our country. Offering education to our young people, job opportunities, business opportunities. That will be a discussion for another day. But that's what UPND will do. So there's no other group out there other than UPND that can redeem this country. So we will be able to Zambia, even under these difficulties, because we shall overcome. I thank you.